In this video, I will explore the possibility of creating competitive Division B towers using the bonus rules. To achieve the 5 kg bonus, there are two differences between the non-bonus version to consider. The first is a design difference, where the base of the tower has to span a 29 cm diameter circle instead of a 20 cm square. The second difference is performance-based, as the bonus tower must hold all 15 kg to qualify. If you recall my first attempt at a bonus tower in an earlier video, it wasn't very successful. It only held 5.626 kg and was not even close to holding the required 15 kg. From this failure mode, I decided to tweak the design by adding a horizontal cross member piece at the very top. I also needed to increase the strength of both the legs and all the cross members. Let's take a look at my notes for this next build. I wanted to make sure I could build a bonus tower that held the entire 15 kilograms, so I decided to be fairly conservative and increase the mass of the legs and cross members by quite a bit. I increased the total leg mass by 39% and the cross members by a whopping 78% and switched to 1 20th by 1 20th pieces. The result was a finished tower weighing 43% more, but hopefully now it will hold over 15 kilograms. The construction techniques are identical to what I showed in the previous video, so I'll just briefly go through them. Here are the legs taped to the bonus tower jig using blue painter's tape. Here is the jig lying on its side, ready to have the first side of cross members attached. You can see all the pre-cut cross member pieces carefully sorted and ready to go in the background. The first side is now done, and you can see the new horizontal cross member at the top in the close-up picture. Depending on the strength of the legs and the cross members, this may or may not be necessary, but to be safe, I added them to this build. Now that the two sides are done, it's time to stand the jig back up and carefully sand all the edges to remove any excess cross member material to make the remaining two sides completely flat. Repeat the steps to attach the cross members on the remaining two sides, and now the tower is complete and ready to be removed from the jig. Carefully remove the tape, and your tower should slide nicely off the jig. Here is a larger picture of this tower and my entire test rig. You can really get a feel for how big these devices are when you see them next to other things like a five gallon bucket. Here is the tower right before testing. It weighs a pretty hefty 6.28 grams. Here is the live testing of the tower. This chonker will probably hold a lot of weight, so I'll speed up the video until it gets closer to failure. Not bad at all. This tower held 17.457 kilograms, which means its actual efficiency was 2780. And because it held over 15 kilograms, its competition score was a very respectable 3185. It looks like this tower had a leg failure near the top. To put this build in perspective, it would have the same competition score as a 4.71 gram non-bonus tower holding the full load. That is very good, but not quite beating the 3409 benchmark tower I showed in the previous video. Let's see what happens if we try and reduce the mass a bit to potentially beat that score. Compared to the previous build, I reduced the total leg mass by about 14% and the cross member mass by just over 21%. The final dry mass was 5.33 grams. If this tower holds the entire 15 kilograms, it would score 37.52 and would easily beat the even actual efficiency of the benchmark tower. Fingers crossed. I will skip all the construction pictures and just show the final result as they are identical to the previous build. Here is the finished tower right before testing weighing 5.33 grams. Again, I will speed up the live test video until it gets closer to failure. Six. 
so close. This tower held 14.279 kilograms, or less than 5% shy of the 15 kilograms needed to collect the 5 kilogram bonus. Its actual efficiency and competition score were 2679. It looks like the first failure was in the longest cross members at the bottom. It would definitely be worth trying this again with slightly stronger cross members in the bottom two or three layers. So what can we learn about this tower and the bonus tower design in general? First, as built, this one almost beat the benchmark competition score by quite a bit, but it also underscores the danger of this design. It failed just a bit early and we were stuck with a 2679 score, which isn't that great at all. If we take this tower's actual efficiency of 2679 and imagine optimizing that at exactly 15 kilograms, that would mean a 5.6 gram tower. At 5.6 grams, a bonus tower holding the entire load would score 3571 and be almost identical to our benchmark tower's actual efficiency. My early conclusion is that a bonus tower can at least be on par with the non-bonus version, but it isn't obviously better. It might be slightly more beneficial for Division C as the leg angle will be steeper, but I would still recommend teams start with the non-bonus version. Once you know the limits of what you can build with the no risk, no bonus design, only then start to explore the bonus design to see if you can reliably score higher. In the next video, I'll take my first look at a Division C build using the non-bonus design. Thanks for watching and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.